When these people found a crying horse trapped in the mud, they immediately jumped to the rescue. And as one of the men got the mare out of trouble, she thanked him in a way that left all of them speechless. Darla Connolly stood high on a ridgeline outside of Calgary in Canada and scanned the vast stretch of land before her. The area had extraordinary rainfall this season. More than six inches had fallen in less than a week, turning most of the marshy areas into deceptively dangerous bogs capable of sucking men, vehicles, and large animals down altogether. It was the latter possibility that worried her the most. There were two herds of wild horses in the area. One was new. It had just been brought in. The other was more established. Darla wasn't worried about them, as she knew they were comfortable on the land. It was the new herd that concerned her. This was their first rainy season in the area, and she wanted to make sure they were okay. But, far beyond the horizon, things were all but okay. In the new herd, a few animals were becoming anxious. This anxiety was like a highly contagious disease. It spread from one animal to the next, and then the next, and the next. Ears were pulled flat against heads, stallions pawed at the wet, muddy earth, and the three foals tried to squeeze in under their mothers to escape the deluge. The two-year-old mare had wandered off on her own an hour before. It wasn't the first time she went on a little adventure by herself, but this time she'd meandered too far. She'd lost sight of the herd, and by the time she realized it, the rain had started coming down in buckets again. Her choice was simple, find shelter against the storm or get wet while trying to catch up with the herd. Just north of her was a copse of trees. Without thinking twice, she headed off in that direction at a comfortable canter. Then came her second choice for the day, head for the trees in a straight line or take the roundabout way. A straight line would take her through 200 yards of marshy no man's land. The herd always avoided this area. It was as if the old stallions knew something they didn't. The roundabout way would take her around the muddy ground. It would take her to the trees on solid ground, skirting the dangers the old stallion attempted to avoid when the herd grazed in the area. But it was completely exposed to the rain and would take her twice as long. So the mare chose the first way. She adjusted her course slightly and sauntered into the mud lake with her hooves held high. At first, it was easy going, the water reached up to her knees, and the mud underfoot was solid enough to hold her weight. Around her, the hiss of the rain doused all other sounds. Then, the unexpected happened. The water became deeper. The mud became mushier. She was still halfway across. Instead of keeping a comfortable pace, she now bucked forward to make headway. The water was up to her belly, and she made jumping leaps to keep going, much like a dolphin breaching the ocean surface. But suddenly, everything disappeared from under her. She sank into the mud like a rock. Her head was underwater, and her legs squirreled desperately to regain some kind of foothold. Her front hooves hit mud while her head was still underwater. She pulled forward with all her might and reached a spot where the bottom sloped upward. The mare whinnied in panic when her head broke the surface. The mud held her weight for now, but each time she tried to move forward, her hooves chafed away clumps of drenched earth and ice under the water. She was stuck. She would never get out of that muddy pit on her own. She needed help, and quickly. But thankfully, her hero was on her way. Darla bullied her ATV past Crematorium Rock on the highest part of the property. From there, the two-track road hopped down to the flat ground on the far side of the ridge. The rain was still coming down in torrents. The going was rough, even in an ATV. The vehicle bucked, hiccuped, and spluttered as it bounced down the steep decline. Darla wasn't worried about the rain as much as she was worried about the mud. These muskeg areas around Calgary could be deceptive in heavy rains. The marshlands looked placid and shallow, but there were many hidden holes beneath the water and mud surface. If one of the new horses had the sudden inclination to wander into one of these areas, it could end up in one of those underwater holes. If it did, it was only a matter of time before it got stuck in the mud. Darla frowned as her concern increased. The horse would thrash about. It wouldn't be able to find a foothold. All the while, as the horse's panicked attempts to free itself intensified, it would scrape away more solid mud from the bottom until the bog would swallow it whole. It was a terrible way for a horse to die. 
In previous seasons, they'd lost two animals in this way, and it broke her heart every time she thought about it. Darla picked up the first herd, the older, quieter one, as she eased off the decline onto level ground. The horses were tucked beneath the pines. Their heads were low and their ears were floppy. They were a picture of surrender. Under the leadership of a vigilant stallion, they would stand there, resting a leg here and there, thinking about whatever it was that horses think about, and wait for the storm to pass. Nothing to be concerned about here. She turned east to look for the other herd. They were skittish and not used to human presence yet. They didn't know the land, and the herd hadn't settled into the leadership of the mare and stallion that had emerged as the alpha team. Animals still wandered away from the group whenever they pleased. This was her real concern. Darla found them sooner than she expected. Like the older, bigger herd, they were tucked in under the trees, peaceful and waiting for the weather to turn. It was impossible to count the animals beneath the trees. She had no way of knowing if all the animals were there. As she tried to move closer, the stallion picked up her presence, then the mare. She trotted around the front of the herd, alert and with her ears pricked forward now. Without making a fuss, she pushed the herd deeper into the trees. Unfortunately, not even she noticed the missing horse. The mare in the muskeg was now in real trouble, and she knew it. There was no firm ground beneath her hind legs. They were in a constant swimming motion, treading water while her front legs scrambled to find firmer ground. Every movement exhausted her more. Her breathing was already ragged and her lungs were burning. She shrieked in the hope that the herd would hear her. The mare's muscles ached and she had little strength left in her legs. Only the top half of her neck was above the water now. She could breathe, but at the rate at which she was sinking, it wouldn't be long before she completely disappeared into the bog. Darla noticed the mare from 300 yards away. It was the movement of the animal's head that first caught her eye. Instantly, she realized that her worst nightmare was playing out before her eyes. She was right to be concerned, she thought, as she opened the throttle to cover the remaining ground between her and the stuck mare. The ATV skidded to a halt on the edge of the muskeg. Darla started wading toward the horse. Initially, the mud was ankle deep. Then, she sank up to her knees. Darla staggered forward until the sludge came up to her hips. And then, she stopped. Getting this horse out was going to require a minor miracle. As fast as she could, Darla headed back to the edge of the swamp. At the ATV, she fumbled with her two-way radio. Someone from Help Alberta Wildey's Society responded and promised they would be up at the marshlands within 15 minutes. They were the mare's only hope now. The presence of the human gave the mare something else to worry about. Being in the herd when humans approached was one thing. There, she could always take the lead from the old stallion when she was unsure of how to act. Now, she was alone and she was skittish. With wild eyes, while making weaker and weaker attempts to clamber from the mud, she kept her focus on the human and her ATV. But this meant that the mare lost concentration, and for a brief moment, her head dropped below the water. She breathed some water and mud, jerked her head upright, and spluttered. Thankfully, the truck with the rescue equipment and the Help Alberta Wildy Society volunteers arrived in just over 20 minutes. They huddled around Darla as she explained the makeshift plan. The tallest of them would have to move into the marsh and circle around the back of the horse, then slide a rope around the mare's hindquarters. This would give her some support so she wouldn't have to struggle so much anymore and would help them pull her out eventually. It was important to support the mare's weight in some way now. She needed to regain a little strength. Once the pulling started, the volunteers would need her help. Darla continued. Then, we loop the ends of the rope and tie it into the nylon straps with the ratchets. That goes onto the back of at least two ATVs. Once the rescue rig had been set up, two of the volunteers would drive the ATVs. They would pull the horse from the front and the rest of them would be in the mud behind the horse, trying to keep it stable and upright and push it forward. It took a while to get everything ready. All the while, Darla nervously watched the horse. She was still struggling, still sinking, and still whinnying wildly. A man called Daryl Glover stripped down to his shorts, took one end of a thick rope, and started to wade back into the bog. Down to his knees, then his hips, then his shoulders. With only his head sticking out above water, Daryl trundled his way around the back of the mare. 
She was not crazy about his presence, he could see that, but her legs were bogged down and her movements would be limited. If he remained alert, there was little chance she could hurt him, at least not in the deeper part of the mud. When they got her to solid, shallower ground, all bets would be off though. Daryl threaded the rope around her rump, staying well behind her. The horse struggled harder and tried to turn her head far enough to keep an eye on him. She was reacting like a prey animal now, almost like the men circling her were instead hungry wolves. Once Daryl had the rope in place, he pulled it tighter, inch by inch, until he felt it tense around the horse's rump. One of the volunteers rushed into the mud, waded a few yards, and grabbed the rope's end from Daryl. The volunteer ran full speed toward the ATV. In his run, he fashioned a simple loop from both ends and threw it over the ATV's tow bar. He jumped in and drove slowly forward until he felt the rope run out of slack. The horse's relief when the rope took most of the weight from her hind legs was visible. She became calmer in an instant, almost sitting on the supporting rope. Darla was satisfied. Part one of the plan worked as expected. It took less than a minute to insert the harness into the rope rig and for the ATV to pull the rope tight around the horse's hindquarters again. The horse sighed and snorted again as she settled against the rope and rested her aching hind legs. This time, Daryl took a different route into the sludge than he had when he slipped the rope around the horse. He approached from her other side deliberately. When he was on this side, the mare would be able to see him. She would be less panicked than if she was aware of him but couldn't keep an eye on his movements. When he was waist deep, Daryl rested for a few seconds to regain his strength. The mud was thick and clingy like molasses. It sucked his feet down every time he put weight on them and it was like pulling against the thousand pounds of suction to get on loose and move it forward. When he was in place, Daryl threw his right arm into the air and showed the team on land a thumbs up. The ATV's engine roared, the rope tightened, the mare moved forward an inch, Daryl got closer and eventually touched her rump. He felt the rope and his fingertips told him it had a perfect hold on the mare under the surface. One more time, he shouted. Keep it steady. No jerks, just steady pressure. And when you hear me shout, stop where you are. Don't let the truck roll back or we'll lose all the ground we gained. The message was relayed to the driver and the ATV groaned again. The rope was as taut as a guitar string now. Daryl pushed the mare's rump with all the strength he could muster. It wasn't so much that he thought he could actually help the animal's forward motion. The effort was more about inspiring her to put in some work as well. Then, something amazing happened. Daryl wasn't ready to call it a win quite yet, but it certainly lifted the pressure some. It seemed like the horse reached firm ground with her front legs. There was none of the thrashing from before. Instead, Daryl could feel the muscles in the horse's entire body bunching up under the strain. Great, he thought. She got a foothold. Now, she can become a part of the effort to save her. After 20 minutes of stop-start, the horse's hind legs dug into firmer mud. Daryl was only up to his chest in the bog now, so they had been making progress. The moment the mare's hind legs bit into the solid mud, it was as if the ATV suddenly got a second engine. For a moment, as the mare made headway, the rope went slack. The volunteer adjusted and pulled forward to make it taut again. The going was easier now. The mare's chest appeared above the waterline. Then she was up to her hocks. Her head was high and her ears were flat. Her lungs were heaving and her muscles shook in ripples from all the strain. Daryl made it clear for everyone to stand back in a hurry. The horse was a few inches from solid ground and when the mare realized she was free, there was no telling what she would do. Daryl bet that she would take off. The key would be to prevent her from rushing into the mud pit again. A panicked wild horse was a typical prey animal. Its first course of action was always to put as much distance between it and the danger it was facing in the shortest time possible. Daryl made a mental calculation. The horse would want to head for the cover of the trees. The shortest route would be through the marshland, right back where she started. So he asked the other volunteers to circle around his back to prevent her from doing just that and then he indicated for the driver to make one last pull. The mare came out of the water with an audible pop. Daryl fell back into the mud and feverishly wiped the muck from his eyes. 
Darla rushed in to help him up. Right now, he needed to be alert. For the next few seconds, he would have to watch every move the mare made. But to his astonishment, the mare shook the water from her coat and just stood there. Her head was up, her ears forward, and while she was alert, there was none of the panic from before left in her eyes. She walked over to Daryl and Darla. Then she stuck her head out, rubbed it against Daryl, sniffed twice, and headed for the tree line in a relaxed trot. The rescue team was speechless. A wild horse had just stopped to thank the man who had saved her from certain death like a domesticated cat or dog would do. This would definitely be the beginning of a friendship for the ages. But for now, both the mare and Daryl needed a long shower and a good night of rest. Such a great story! Do you have a story about an attempt to rescue a wild animal from certain death? Tell us about it in the comments, we'd love to hear! For now though, that's it for us, catch you in the next video!